And we're back. Once again, I would like to welcome you all to part three of part four, a Relationship Unleashed Empowerment Workshop Series. Tonight's workshop series is about Generation X, Y, the Millennium, and the Baby Boomers. And can we all get along? Without uh, further delay, we're going to bring up our next presenter, my son, my partner, my partner, my partner in crime. If you all would give a round of applause for Davy and Skeeter Clemens, he's going to do a presentation on Generation X and Generation Y. Davy Clemens, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing? In the words of my mentor, you're supposed to say, I'm doing better than good and better than most. I know that's right. Just think about it. You are doing better than good and better than most. I want to talk about Generation X. That's 1960 through the 1980s. Generation Y is 1980s through 2000. And my mother, she's a baby boomer. That's 1946 through 64. And people before that, they're like the veterans. Hello, somebody. And Generation Z, that's year 2000 and up. We don't know that much about them. But, <laughs> but this is the first time ever in history that we have had four generations living and working together. Think about it. So with that being said, you know you're going to have problems when you have four generations living together and working together. Because we all have different core values, family belief systems, uh, education, dealing with monies in a certain way. I can remember my grandmother, she used to take her money and put it underneath the bed. That was her bank. And now we have people who go to the bank and deposit money. We all, I also remember back in the day, my grandmother would go and cash her check at the liquor store. Hello, somebody. Now we go, we have direct deposit, people go to the bank, so you see how it changes. But I want to just talk about 11 factors that we can challenge ourselves with that can grasp and connect us all together, even though we come from different generations. Can I do that for a minute? Yeah. Yeah. Number one, you have to remember about these four generations, you have to think of your fellow member or your fellow other the think first of the other fellow meaning remove yourself out of the way for a minute this is the foundation this is the first prerequisite of the situation getting along with others you have to put them first sometimes we don't want to do that because it's difficult to put other people ahead of us sometimes i.e. in our relationships at work all the above but you cannot thinking yourself first all the time. It's not gonna work. So, but if you can think of your think of others first, that means you have to discover who you really are. You're not intimidated by the other people. Because when you begin to put other people first, that means you really know who you are. And all of us have greatness in us. And until you realize you have greatness in you, you will never be able to put other people before you. Because it doesn't threaten or intimidate me by seeing other people walk in front of me. Some people can't handle that. It intimidates them, but it doesn't hurt me. So if we realize that we have a sense of worth to ourselves, that we are somebody, that we are uh, a great in our own being, it's okay, but we can't do that because we don't know who we really are. So if you think of other people first, that means you're instilling something in them. You ever had a supervisor at work who's always on you. And if you think about it, this supervisor is from another generation. I don't understand why he's on me, why he's pushing me. The supervisor, she or he may see something special in you that you don't even see in yourself. So we need people to push us, people to show us our gifts, people to show us how to do things and discover our stuff. For example, my mentor tells this story all the time. In Africa, it was two little boys playing with stones in Africa. And so a man walked up to him and he said, hey, let me have those little stones you have. Can I buy them from you? And he said, how much are you going to get me? He said, I'm going to give you a piece of candy for those two stones. And so the man gave the little boys 
a piece of candy for two stones. And the little boys didn't realize they had a gift in their hand the whole time. They had diamonds. But the man walked up and gave them some candy. Many of us have given away our gifts to people for a piece of candy. And we don't even realize it. You have to protect your gift. Protect your mind. Protect your well-being. Because your life and your gifts are like diamonds like those little boys gave away. Number two. You have to build up other people's sense of importance. When you make a person seem less important, that's frustrating. It's frustrating for someone to call you dumb, to call you stupid, to tell you you're not worthy of having this or that. That's frustrating. You have to build up other people's sense of importance. We can all benefit by reaching out to other people. I don't understand a lot of things right now about certain generations. I don't understand the new language sometimes. She's on fleet. I had to find out what fleet meant. What's up, bro? I had to find out what I was throwing a piece at. What's up, peace? They're like, what is peace? Peace. You know, you have to find out, ask questions. You can't look down on other people because they sag their pants. I don't know why they sag their pants. But it's not my job to tell them you look stupid by sagging your pants. You have to get to know me. Ask them why. Because they have potential inside of them as well. So it's important to build up other people because it's nothing worse than somebody tearing down your flesh, your spirit, your hopes. It's, that's a horrible thing for you to do. So build up other people. Number three, respect other humans' personal rights. You have to respect people. No two personalities are molded by the same forces. Just think about it. Just think about it. You can be with a person for years. Our personalities will never be the same. You have to respect that. You have to respect that. I may like the fan on some nights. You may like it hot. So we got to compromise. You got to respect me. You can't just expect me to do everything you want. I can't expect you to do everything I want. We have to respect each other. We have to learn how to respect people's personal rights in relationships, out of relationships. My mother talks about her supervisor at work all the time. Mr. Perry, Ms. Clanman, Ms. Clanman. She said that's how he talked. But she and Mr. Perry, they stayed in tune, they stayed in tune. Until she began to release all the attention she had toward Mr. Perry. Because Mr. Perry doing fine, she was the one that was hurt. You have to learn how to deal with people and respect people's personal rights. Number four, give sincere appreciation towards people. Let them know that you appreciate them. Tell people thank you. We have generations now, people, they don't even say thank you. You give them something, you do something for them, they just, they think they deserve it. No, come here uh, son, come here brother or sister. Say thank you when I do something good. You have to teach people, tell them it's okay. Don't get angry, don't get mad, I'm gonna stop doing for them, I'm gonna know. Talk to them. We all come from different generations. You have to talk to them. Number five, eliminate the negative. Stop being so negative. Everything is negative. You cannot be negative and live a good, productive life. Negativity doesn't go along with Generation X, Y, the baby boomers, the millennials. It don't go with none of them. Stop being so negative. Negative energy draws negative people. Negative people, negative energy, negative situation. And you stay in S-H-I-T. And you begin to smell like S-H-I-T. Stop the negativity. It's okay. It's okay to be positive sometimes. But we're so used to the negativity because law of attraction. Negative attracts negative. So it's okay. Let's pull some positive energy up. I don't know why the young kids are so mad today. I don't know why. I don't know why the young man fought the man at the fair over uh, being in line. I don't know why. But let's talk to them to find out why are you so angry. Let's, let's find out the root of the problem before we go prejudging them saying that all kids and all teenagers are bad. We can't do that. We can't throw them away because those kids are our future. They look up to us. So we got to make sure we're together. Because they look up for us to, for guidance. How does it look? We're acting a fool just like our kids acting a fool. 
We've been on Facebook like the kids been on Facebook. We bust windows out like the kids bust windows out. We fight in the club like the kids fight in the club. No! Stop it! Number six, avoid openly trying to reform people. All human beings should know that they are imperfect. I said they should know. If you walk around life and you think you got it all together, something is wrong. I know my flaws. I got a little man over here, he called a cussing demon. He'll cuss you out in a minute. I have to work on him. Because you press that wrong button, and my neck swing around like the matrix, I will cuss you out, but I have to work on that. I'm just being real. We all know our problems. So we have to work on our problems. Abraham, no, it was it Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, Abraham Lincoln said, I do not like that man. Therefore, I should get to know him better. Isn't that something? We go around and say, I don't like him. I don't like him. I want to know him. Get to know the person. You may end up liking him. You never know. Talk to people. We have to talk. Every generation, we must talk. Also, if you see something wrong with the kids or someone in a generation that may not be similar to yours, don't reform them openly. Put them to the side and talk to them. Like at church, the old church mother will pull you to the side. Baby, your dress is a little too short. They will look. Uh, young man, your suit is a little too tight. How would a little guy get up in front of church and say, Trey, your suit too tight. Don't wear that suit to church no more in front of everybody. You know, you don't do that. Pull me to the side. Talk to me. Do not criticize and reform people in the open. Number seven, try to understand the other person. You have to SWV. All I need is some understanding. As simple as one, two, three. Understanding is what we need. Try to get them understanding. We get to a point in life where we don't want to understand nobody but ourselves. You cannot live that way. You cannot. We all are different. We all are, we all have different work habits. Ask the person, why do you work so hard? Ask the person, why are you so lazy? Ask them, why don't you take this serious? Why are you procrastinating? Talk to them. Why are you so messy on your paperwork? Why are your car so dirty? What, what? Talk to people. But we form judgments and we don't talk to people. You have to talk to people to find out the problem. So try to understand the other person. Matter of fact, try to put yourself inside the other person's body and look through their eyes. I feel sorry sometimes for women. I don't know how y'all go in the restroom and use the restroom with all them clothes on. You gotta sit down, pull up, that's too much work, uh-uh. I'm sorry, that's too much work. You got heels on, all that stuff, uh-uh, no. I feel sorry for y'all sometimes. So, I, but I try to understand, you know. So when I go pick my mother up and I'm brushing her at the house, she says, I'm using the restroom. I put my pond part, I cut it off, and I roll my window down, and we out here for a minute. I try to be understanding, I'm just being real. Try to understand. I have to understand when I go pick Shonda up, she's gonna beat her face. She's gonna take out next. So I'm gonna put my car apart, cut it off, because we're gonna be all day beating her face up. Try to understand people. I'm just being real. Number eight, check the first impression when you meet people. Now, this is a tough one because many of us dislike people on the first sight in the first impression of people. And we can't do that. I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty. I was guilty yesterday, matter of fact. And it's tough, but you have to, once again, put yourself in their shoes on that first impression. They may have had a bad day. Things may have happened. You know, uh, traffic, life. Life is tough. Life changes day by day. So you cannot judge a person off their first impression. It's tough. But you cannot judge people off their first impression. When you encounter the younger generation, don't judge them off their first impression. Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, those people are geniuses. Just think about it, they are geniuses. Stephen Wanda, a genius. If they can do those things in life, we can do the same thing they can do, no excuses. So all I'm saying, try to check that first impression. Many of you thought Nicki Minaj was a hoe when she first came out because she wore certain clothes. Hello? Good, you wanted a few. Many people thought that. But later on, they saw her, she was something totally different. 